Data types that implement the iterator trait can be used inside for loops, and they can do more. Some of the functions that are available are listed on the left inside the Rust documentation. In this video, I'll explain some of the basic and most common functions that are used with iterators. The functions that I'll explain in this video are map, filter, collect, zip, and fold. So let's start with map. Map is a function that takes each value in a thing that is being iterated, and then it transforms it into something else. For example, if we have a vector of numbers, we can use the map to multiply all of the numbers in the vector. To begin with, let's first write a for loop that will multiply each of these value in this vector bells. We'll store this result in a new vector called data. Run a for loop, and for each iteration, we'll multiply the value by two. So this is an example of taking each element inside the vector bells and then multiplying by two. Now let's do the same using the map function. These functions that you see over here are also called iterator adapters. So using the iterator adapter, let's name the final result as data as well, net data. This will be of the type vector u32. Our final result will be a vector of type u32. We start with the vowels vector and then say iter. This will create an iterator. This will turn the vector into something that can be iterated. And then we call the function map. The map function takes in a single input. It takes in a function where we can instruct how to transform each value of this vector. The input will be the item being iterated. In this case, we're iterating through the vector. So the item being iterated will be these numbers. For each number, let's multiply this by two, two times x. And finally, since this is still an iterator, we need to transform it back into our data type, vector of type u32 we need to collect each of the items that are being iterated. We do this by calling the function collect. And I see an error since when we run the for loop, it's calling dot into iter, which transfers ownership into the for loop. So to fix this error, I'll simply copy this vector and then paste it here. And now the error goes away. Let's print this new data out, print ln. Execute the code and we get the values two, four, and six. Each value in the original vector is multiplied by two, and we return a new vector. So far, you might not see the advantage of using iter and map to multiply each value in a vector, but iterators can do more. For example, inside this for loop, we collected our result into a vector of u32. But what if we wanted to store our result in a hash set? Then we would have to change this vector u32 into a hash set. And then inside the for loop, we'll have to say insert. But the iterator is more flexible. Over here, all we have to do is say hash set. The way that data is iterated and the way each item is transformed is the same. All we have to change is how the items that are being iterated is collected into the final data. So this is the only change that we had to make. We had to change the data type that we're collecting our results into. In the first example, we collect it inside a vector of u32. If we wanted to collect a result in a hash set, then all we have to do is change this vector to a hash set. Compare this with a for loop. To do this in a for loop, we had to change the data type, and we also had to change the operation on how to store the result in the data type. So this is one power of using iterators. It simplifies a lot of the code. So let's see more examples. The next example that I'm going to show you is filter. Map and filter are probably the two most common iterator adapters that you'll be using in Rust. Filter is an iterator adapter that is useful when we want to omit some of the data from being iterated. For example, inside our for loop, let's say that we only want to push data if the value is less than or equal to 2. In this case, we'll do if b is less than or equal to 2, push 2 times the current value into the vector data. Now, how would we do the same over here? Well, we can call the function filter. Similar to map, the filter takes in a single function as input. The function will take a reference to the item that is being iterated, and we need to return a boolean. True means that we want to include that data in the iterator, and false means we don't want to include it in the iterator. So going back to this example, we only want to include the values that are less than or equal to two. The way we would do this, let's say x as an input. This x is a reference to the value, so we first need to dereference it with an asterisk, and then put x, and say x less than or equal to 2. So this part of the code, 
and this part of the code do the same thing. If x is less than or equal to 2, then keep the item being iterated. If it is greater than 2, then don't keep it inside the iterator. We also need to change iter into into iter. This is because filter gives a reference to the value that is being iterated. Since we're returning a vector of u32, here we're taking ownership of the vowels vector by calling into iter. We're moving the ownership from vowels into data. Let's print this out, filter and map. Execute the code and we get filter and map. The result is 2 and 4. The original data that was being iterated is 1 and 2, since those two values are less than or equal to 2. And for each value that was kept after the filter, it multiplied by 2. Hence, we get 2 and 4. So that was an example of filter and map. Next, let's move on to zip. Zip is a useful iterator adapter if you want to iterate two iterators, and for each iteration, you want to pair them together. So for example, let's say that we have some vector of strings. Let's call this keys. For the values, let's put A, B, and C. These are string literal, so let's use the iterator adapter that we just learned to transform this into string. Iter.map takes in a string literal and then we'll convert it into string to string. And finally, we'll collect the result. Let's also create another vector, that vowels vector u32, having the values 1, 2, and 3. Now let's use the zip iterator adapter to iterate through keys and vowels, and for each iteration, we'll pair the items that are being iterated. Let's call this that zipped vector of type string. Since we're pairing each value in each iteration, it's going to return a tuple of the values being paired. The values that are being paired will be string and u32. We'll first convert the keys into iterator. Keys dot into iter. Here I'm going to call into iter to transfer ownership of keys into our final vector zipped. And then we'll call zip. The zip function takes in another iterator. So say vowels. Again, we'll call into iter so that the final vector zipped will take ownership of the values that are stored in vowels. Zip will return an iterator, so finally we'll call the function collect to collect the result of the iterators into a vector of the type tuple of string and u32 dot collect. Let's print this out. Print ln. Zipped. Execute the code again, and we get zip is a vector of tuples where each item in the tuple is a string and a number. A and 1, B and 2, and C and 3. Zip is a useful iterator adapter when you have two vectors and you want to iterate through them simultaneously. Now because for each iteration, it pairs the values that are being iterated, if one of the vector has a longer length, then that value will be omitted. For example, let's say that keys has four items, however vowels have three items. For each iteration of zip, it's going to pair the letters with the numbers. But for the letter D, there is no number to pair it up with. So this D will be omitted. And to show you this, let's execute the code again. And we get the same result as before. A with 1, B with 2, and C with 3. You don't see a tuple where it starts with D. Since for D, there is no value that can be paired up with. Therefore, zip will only iterate up to the minimum length of the two vectors that are being iterated. Keys has length 4, and vowels has length 3. The minimum length of 4 and 3 will be 3, so the final result of zipped will also have length 3. Now we can use this code with slight modification to turn this vector of string in u32 into a hash map. And here's how you do it. Let's first copy this and then comment this out. And all we have to do is change the type, hash map, where the key is a string and the value is a u32. Now notice that we didn't have to change any of the code on the right side. All we had to do was change the type. This is because Rust knows how to convert a tuple of string and u32 into a value of hash map. Let's execute the code. And we get the values zipped is a hash map where C has the value 3, A has the value 1, and B has the value 2. Now if you were to do the same thing use a for loop, similar to this example, we would have to change the data type that is initialized and we would also have to change how to store the data into a hash map. However, by using iterators, we only had to change the data type. And finally, let's take a look at the iterator adapter fold. Fold is a useful iterator when you want to iterate through some collection and then reduce it into a single value. This single value that you reduce to is called accumulator. So for example, let's sum all of the items inside the specter. 
In this example, the sum will be the accumulator. Let's call this sum. We'll start with bows and then create an iterator. And then we'll call the function fold. It takes in two inputs, the initial value of the accumulator. In our example, we're gonna sum all of the items inside this vector. So the initial value, the initial value of the accumulator will be zero. We're summing from zero. The next input will be a function. The first input to this function will be the current state, the current value of the accumulator. For the first iteration, this ACC will be equal to zero. The next item will be the value that is being iterated, the value of these vectors. Let's call this x. Since in this example, we want to sum all of the numbers inside this vector, all we have to do is take the current sum and then add the current value. Let's print this out, print ln. Execute the code and we get sum is equal to six. Fold is a useful iterator adapter and you can use this to implement map, filter, and zip as well. It's a common exercise when you're learning functional programming. And if you're curious, I'll leave this as an exercise for you. So in this video, I explained some of the iterator adapters that are available in Rust. These are map, filter, collect, zip, and fold. Now, there are many more iterator adapters that might be useful for you. So be sure to check out the official documentation and look at some of the methods that are available for iterators.